Hi, I'm Emily. Welcome to episode 29 of Holding the Sticks, a hockey-themed fiber arts podcast. Hi everyone and welcome to my living room here in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. My name is Emily, like I said. You can find me on Ravelry as Shanti Dragon and on Twitter and Instagram as Emily3022. I also have a Plurk account under the same username, Emily3022, but I only use it to um, post updates to the podcast. So you're welcome to follow me there, but it will take me a while to follow you back. I don't check in there very often anymore. Um, like I said last time, I'm trying to pare down a little bit on my social media presence because it's just gotten a little out of control. <laughs> so it's Good to be back this week. I hope you all have had a wonderful week as well. I wanted to let you know that next week we'll be getting ready to head out to Rhinebeck. So uh, my husband and I will be going up for New York Sheep and Wool Festival and also to see his family in Connecticut. And we will be celebrating our 15th wedding anniversary that week on the um, 16th of October. So we are very, very excited about that. I may be able to get an episode out before we leave next week, but I'm not going to make any promises. You know how things go when um, you're getting ready for a big trip like that. Sometimes um, things get a little crazy. So just letting you all know about that. And I also had a big thank you to, um, to give. So thank you to Elizabeth Ravenwood and her group, A Big Comfy Dog House. That's a Ravelry group. Apparently I was nominated to receive her, I'm assuming her latest pattern, and it is beautiful. Um, they are currently doing a knit along for the Cancer Center of Maine to make chemo caps, chemo caps for the patients there. And somebody nominated, nominated me this week to receive the free pattern and whoever that was thank you so much that was so sweet and i'm so looking forward to knitting this they gifted me the um let me make sure i get the name of it right the braided gems hat in wristers and it looks like this they look like this because it's two things and I looked at the pattern real quick, and it looks like I'm going to be able to knit this with just one skein of worsted weight yarn. And I've never done any beading in my knitting, so maybe I'll try that and maybe I won't. We'll see. I will probably knit one of these very soon. So thanks once again. I so appreciate it. That's always such a pick-me-up when I um, get a message like that in my inbox. So other than that, I think I'm ready to get into the first period. Um, like I mentioned last week, I have been having trouble with lighting and color in the podcast. So I'm doing a few things a little bit differently this week, and hopefully that's going to be a bit better. So um, yeah, let's get into it. Time for the first period in the zone where I talk about my fiber arts projects. Like I said before, this is going to be a quick segment this week because I have only worked on two or three things. So um, just bear with me this week um, with the lightness of the knitting content. <laughs> so the first thing that I've been working on for a long time is the Knit Sampler Afghan by Coates and Clark. As you all know, I've been working on this all year long, and I'm hoping to finish this blanket by um, Christmas to give as a gift. And um, I'm making twice as many squares as the pattern calls for so I can make a larger blanket. And I've been working on that square that I had just started last time, and I thought I would show that to you guys real quick. Oops. Dropped a bunch of stitches. That's no good. But I can still show you. I'll fix that in a minute. This is the current square that I'm working on. Try and get that to stop 
making all that noise. You can see that pretty well. It's a mosaic square. And I am using US size 8 needles, 5 millimeter if I am, yes, 5 millimeter needles, and Red Heart Soft Yarn. And these two colorways are Dark Leaf and Berry. And the berry is coming out a little funny looking on the camera. It is a beautiful mauve pink color. So there is that little thing. The other thing, if you follow me on Instagram um, or Twitter, you have probably seen this in progress. And I introduced this for the first time last podcast, last week. And I have dubbed this the Epic Hockey Blanket of Doom. And this is the queen-sized garter stitch blanket that I am knitting um, while I watch hockey this season. And I figured it would take the whole season to make this blanket, but at the rate I'm going right now, it might not take that long. It's the perfect hockey knitting. Like I said, it's just straight garter stitch, so I don't even have to look at it when I'm knitting it. And I gathered all of my worsted weight machine washable um, non-wool yarns. Uh, wool blends were okay, but mostly acrylics and cottons are in this blanket. Gathered them all up, stuck them in a big bag, and um, at the end of each period of hockey that I watch, I grab a new color, join it with a magic knot, and just continue knitting. So let me show you what I've got here. And I'll probably have to post a picture in here. Actually, let me just post a picture in right here. And that is sort of, you can get a better idea of the blanket. But here is the actual blanket. Pardon me for bending out of screen. I have gotten a lot done here. This keeps me very toasty now when I'm knitting on it, so. You can see all of that. <laughs> it keeps going and going. There we go. There's the bottom. <laughs> so yes, this is a crazy blanket. Um, for a while, I was worried I might run out of these scraps of yarn. I'm still not positive I'm going to have enough, but basically every time um, I or my husband go, not every time, but if we go to a shop that we don't usually go to that sells yarn, we'll just grab another skein and throw it in the mix and watch me wind up with even more scraps than I started with after this blanket is finished. But I could just see that happening for sure. <laughs> Those are the only two projects I've actively worked on this week except for my She Shoots She Scores which I'm wearing on my head. <laughs> this is the Mont Royal hat by T-Shep on Ravelry. I cannot remember the size of needles I used to knit it, but I used Miss Babs Yummy yarn in the tapestry colorway. I'm just going to bend down here so you can see it a little bit better. I love how this turned out. The yarn is 100% merino. It's super soft and this is going to somebody who is going through chemo treatments right now and um, as soon as I'm done recording it will be packaged up and um, sent out. So there is that. It's a little bit slouchy you can see in the back or if you want to pull it down further it's a little less slouchy depending on what you want. So um, I love these colors and they're actually coming in pretty close especially in this area right here they're showing a lot more true. Um, I've got sunlight coming in well I've got sunlight coming in from all directions so that's just how it goes. <laughs> So that is it for In the Zone, except for one thing. You all know that I have a drawing to do, so I'm going to pause real quick here and get that ready. All right, so this is the wrap-up for the Warm Hands Hoedown, y'all. <laughs> I did the drawing off-camera because, um, as you know, I have my the thread that I draw from is both a chatter and a finished objects thread so I just keep using a random number generator until it lands on a post with a finished object picture and there were 52 posts in the thread I landed on a couple of chatter posts first but then I landed on number 36 which was pretty PK jewelry on, Ra on Ravelry and um, congratulations pretty you have won the $25 Etsy gift certificate and just get in touch with me by private message or any of the other options of contacting me that I mentioned earlier. 
and I will get that out to you. Here is a picture of Pretty's very beautiful finished fingerless mittens. Those are just so pretty. <laughs> so congratulations! Yay! So that brings us to the fact that we have a new craft along to get started. This craft along will go until the end of the year, so December 31st, 2013. I'm very, very excited to announce the sweater swing! <laughs> I know I'm a dork. Y'all don't have to tell me that. I already know it. <laughs> So you can knit, crochet, knit or crochet any sweater, any size, um, all the way from baby doll up to a full adult size sweater for this knit along or crochet along, you, but you only get one entry this time. You can knit, like I said, any size sweater, but you only get one entry for this one. I am going to pick up a prize, most likely a beautiful skein of yarn at Rhinebeck as the prize for this, so I'll show that next time. Um, if I find something else that is fiber or knitting related, instead of the skein of yarn, then I'll get that instead, just to mix it up a little bit. But I will, won't know until I go. <laughs> so I will start that thread as soon as I can remember to do it, and you all can start posting your finished objects. Projects can be already started as long as they're not finished yet. If you finish up a sweater in October, November, or December, you can post them in the finished objects thread for an entry into this craft along. So I'm really excited about this one and maybe I'll finish my uh, Granville sweater in time to enter it. I better finish it by then. <laughs> All right, let's get into the second period. Welcome to the second period. This is called Off Ice and it will include my chatter section and my training room section. I really am having a hard time articulating today for some reason, so hang in there with me, people. Um, I'm going to start with chatter this week because I figured... Some of you might not even want to hear about my training room stuff. That's my fitness things. So um, it'll make it easier for you to skip that if I do my little chatter segment first. And I don't have a whole lot of chatter this week. I only just wanted to talk about um, my work week, what happened at work this week. And um, well, obviously, probably you can tell just by looking at me that I finished purchasing the Glow Minerals uh, makeup that... I was telling you about last week. So um, I got the lip stuff and the eye stuff and you probably can't really even tell about the eyeshadow because I'm not good at applying it yet. I'm still watching tutorials on YouTube. If any of y'all know good tutorials, I have an eyeshadow trio. So if you guys know of good tutorials and easy to follow tutorials about how to apply eyeshadow, I would love if you would share those with me in this week's thread. Um, I am terrible at applying makeup. I kind of skipped the whole lots of makeup phase as a team. I kind of <laughs> never really learned how to apply it. So um, yeah, when I really, when I have tried to apply darker eye makeup in the past, I just look like I've been in a hockey fight. So <laughs> I've gotten a little bit better over the years and I'm wearing a little bit now, but like I said, it's very light because I'm conservative and afraid to give myself a couple of black eyes with the eyeshadow. Got the lip gloss and a lip pencil and um, I'm still really getting used to this. This is not something I'm used to. <laughs> um, Y'all who have been watching this podcast for a while um, know that I don't usually wear much makeup if any. So I feel like somebody has taken one of those big kissy lip stickers and stuck it on my face. <laughs> but I'm told by others that, that it looks good. So um, I'm doing what the Knit More Girls talk about. If you listen to the Knit More Girls podcast, they have a take three bites philosophy. If you're not sure you're going to like something, take at least three bites before you decide that you don't. So I'm taking three bites and I'm, I'm doing the full 
makeup thing for the next several weeks to see. We'll see how long it lasts and, you know, maybe I'll keep some stuff and get rid of other stuff or, you know, things like that. Um, it is really fun to play with color on my face. I've never, like I said, never done much of that, but it's pretty amazing to me the transformation that can happen. And watching people come into the spa um, without any makeup and then get the Glow Mineral makeovers and then leave with a completely different look is, is pretty cool. I enjoy that. Maybe I missed my calling as a makeup artist. <laughs> well, maybe not since I can't apply it <laughs> very well. But I'm learning a lot about it. And at age 37, it's kind of funny to me that it took me this long to really get very interested in makeup. I've had phases where I've been a little bit interested, but never really gotten good at it. But anyway, enough of that. Um, I've had a really interesting week as far as my clients go. I've had a wonderful mix of people come in to see me for massage this week. Um, everything from just a pure relaxation massage, which I love to do. Um, and a relaxation massage, I just kind of melt into the music and um, kind of do everything slow and gentle and a little bit rhythmically to just try and calm everything down for the clients. Um, it's one of my favorite forms of massage and I don't get to do pure relaxation very often because of my reputation as the deep tissue queen where I work. <laughs> <laughs> and I really do enjoy the deep tissue as well. Deep tissue work uses the logical side of my brain a lot more. Uh, when I'm doing more clinical work where I'm having to concentrate on how these muscles work, how they interact with the other muscles in the body, and you know, trying to keep it within the client's pain tolerance, um, my philosophy is always my rule really is what I should call it is that if it hurts so good that's fine if it goes beyond that that's not okay um, as a massage therapist you know with one year of schooling I don't have the same training that a physical therapist or a doctor would have a physical therapist can take you beyond that pain um, I don't like to call it you know pain level but they can take you beyond discomfort and into the realm of pain safely, whereas as a massage therapist, I don't have that kind of training. Um, although people often want me to hurt them. not That sounds bad, but people want to feel, they feel like if it doesn't hurt, it's not doing them any good, which is something I completely disagree with. But anyway, that's a whole nother soapbox. I haven't gotten on a soapbox in a while, have I? <laughs> but I do enjoy the deep tissue work you can get some amazing results both from just the relaxation and the deep tissue work. I've worked with a f several athletes this week, um, different sports, weightlifters, um, baseball players. Um, it's been really fun. It's one of the reasons I absolutely love my job because you never get bored. You know, you never know what that next client is going to need and um, it's just fun to mix it up. So I even had a prenatal massage, which is probably one of my favorite modalities to do. Um, young lady who is due, I say young lady, she's not much younger than me, but she is due any day now. So I love those <laughs> because it's, you know, getting exciting and, you know, getting, getting ready to greet the baby. So love it. Love my job, but y'all already know that. So get into just a little bit of my training room, my little fitness segment here. Um, it's been a mixed bag sort of week. I started out Sunday with a three mile run with my husband and it was lovely, wonderful. Um, actually, you know, it was one, it's always wonderful after the run is finished. We both really struggled at the beginning of the run. We felt sluggish and tired and um, we never really, I didn't hit my rhythm until more than halfway through the run and my husband, it took him like three quarters of the run before he felt like he had hit his stride. So I don't know what that was about, but in the end we both felt really great and we're glad we had done it. Um, Monday, Tuesday, well Monday is always my rest day. It's just a rule. I do not do any running or um, extreme physical work on Monday just to let my body recover. Tuesday and Wednesday, I had some kind of uh, either a stomach bug or I ate something that didn't agree with me, but 
bottom line was I wasn't going to go out running like that. I got on my exercise bike, I think, Wednesday night for a little bit. Um, Thursday and Friday, I did interval running. My husband came with me one of those days or maybe even both. And then I didn't run again until yesterday, which I'll talk about on next week's podcast. So um, not a bad week, really, but um, different. And, you know, the beginning of the week, I really was starting to feel sluggish because I didn't run those two days back to back. Three days, actually, because Monday was a rest day. Um, The other thing that's been going on with my running is I mentioned last week or the week before that I've been using um, an inhaler for exercise-induced asthma. The last time I went to the doctor, she listened to me tell her about my breathing troubles when I run and said, oh, you need an inhaler. So I got the inhaler and I started using it. It was a huge difference. I could not believe the difference. I felt like um, it wasn't like the magic bullet or whatever. It wasn't that I could suddenly be superwoman and run a 10 minute mile. It wasn't like that. But I felt like I could push harder without um, getting that tight chested wheezy thing going on that I've been, that, that I've been getting. It, you know, that feeling when you get all tight chested and you're wheezing, it, it's sort of, I don't know if I would call it an all out panic, but it's, it, creates a mental barrier to working harder to try and run faster because I would start to feel that a little bit and hold back pull back on my speed a little bit so um, the inhaler was helping me to overcome that mental barrier unfortunately over the past couple of weeks um, the inhaler has I'm pretty sure it's the inhaler. It's been giving me headaches. They started out mild and I was okay with that. You know, mild headache is, you know, it didn't affect me too much. But over time they have gotten progressively worse to where they're borderline migraine level headaches. That's not okay. So the last week I have not used my inhaler at all. So um, it's just an albuterol inhaler for anybody who's wondering. So I don't know if I'm going to, well, I know I'm going to stop using it for a few weeks and then I might try using it again for a while to see if the headaches come back. Um, If they do, then it'll be time for me to look at other options. Um, To me, I've never had an asthma emergency. I've never had an asthma attack. Um, The inhaler just helps me push harder. To me, having those uh, migraine-ish headaches, it's not worth it. It's not worth Um, running faster to have these headaches. I mean, the whole purpose of me running is for me to get healthier (laughs) and to feel better, you know, and have more energy and headaches aren't about any of that. So um, I've really had to do some soul searching about it because I really want to get to the point where I can run with a group. And I feel like most groups are at the 10 mile 10 minute mile um, level and I'm I'm pretty far from that still so even as much as I want to run with the big kids it's not worth it so I'll be looking into um, after we get back from Rhinebeck I will look into maybe alternative medicine uh, acupuncture um, stuff like that and next time I see my doctor I'm going to talk to her as well about other alternatives for exercise induced asthma. So that's pretty much it as far as my training room goes. So let's get into a little bit of hockey talk. Time to drop the puck for the third period and a little bit of hockey talk. NHL season has started. Woohoo! So exciting. I have had a blast watching regular season games this past week. And the Hurricanes, after playing two games, they won uh, They won one and they lost one in overtime. So currently the Hurricanes have three points in the standings. So um, for anybody who doesn't know about the points in the standings, a team will get two points for a win, one point for a loss in overtime, or zero points for a loss. So I think we're doing pretty good. I love the jump that I'm seeing from my team 
They look so good out on the ice. So exciting. The AHL season also started, and um, my checkers are doing great. They are 2-0. 2-0-0 oh oh if you want to get specific. <laughs> Two wins, zero losses, and nothing in overtime. So um, it's going to be a good season. Of course, you know, in the spring we'll look back on this and see if it really was a good season or not. <laughs> but I really love what I'm seeing. I haven't got to see the checkers play yet. Um, I like to go down to a game sometime early in the season, but with this Rhinebeck tri trip, it's going to be postponed a bit before we can get down there. And I have not watched any online yet, um, trying to decide whether or not it's worth it. The AHL Live um, service that's out there where I could watch Checkers games on the internet, the quality isn't the best, and the price is... I mean, it's not ridiculously high, but it's high enough to make you pause and think, is it really worth it for the quality I'm getting? So I haven't actually got to see them play, but it sounds like they're doing great. Mike Murphy is back in net for the Checkers, along with Justin Peters. You all know how I love my goalies. I like both of those guys an awful lot, um, but I'm mostly excited about Mike Murphy. I'll tell you a little story about the first time I met Mike Murphy. <laughs> the Checkers, four times a year, have a skate with the team promotion after the game. Um, you can go down on the ice and get autographs and things from the team and you know you skate around and stuff. It's a lot of fun. It's pretty much the only time I get to go ice skating throughout the year. And um, the first time I went to one of these events, Mike Murphy, the he was our starting goalie for the checkers at the time. Uh, I finally worked my courage up to go talk to him. He's very present on Twitter as I was even more present on Twitter at the time than I am now. <laughs> but I went up to him and I put my hand out and I said, Hi, I'm, and he goes, Emily from Twitter. <laughs> he recognized me from my Twitter uh, little avatar. And to be fair, you know, I had this big, long, stripy scarf that I was wearing in my avatar and I was wearing it at the games. And that's probably what he recognized, but I was just blown away that he recognized me from Twitter. <laughs> that was really cool. And if y'all follow me on Instagram, you know that he favorited one of my tweets this past week. So I had a little fangirl moment there, too. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm a big Mike Murphy fan, not only because he's such a nice guy, but because he's a really great goalie. He had a season um, where he didn't get a lot of games last year, so hopefully he'll get his groove back. It looks like he's doing just fine. Sounds like it anyway from what I, you know, I've watched these or listened to these games on the radio. Super exciting there. The interesting thing, I guess this will kind of be the Hockey 101 segment for today. So something interesting happened when I was watching opening night. Um, I was watching, I chose to watch on October 1st, which was NHL's opening night. I watched the Chicago Blackhawks versus the Washington Capitals. Um, and something happened that I'd, I'd never seen happen before. Marion Hosa was tripped by a Caps player when he was on a breakaway. When Hosa was on a breakaway. And he was trying to score on the empty net. There was nobody between him and the net. And this Caps player came and tripped him. And um, that he was awarded an automatic goal. And I didn't know that was a rule. Where if that happens, if you're on a breakaway, there's nobody between you and the net. And the net is empty. In, in other words, the Caps had pulled their goalie. Um, if you get tripped or impeded in any way, then you get an automatic goal. The puck never went in the net, but they got an automatic goal. <laughs> so that was a really interesting thing. Um, if you're interested in technicalities, that is Rule 57.5 in the NHL rule book. So that was pretty cool to see. I always like to um, see interesting things like that. So I know this has been short this week, but that is it for now. Uh, I will try to record again next Monday. But until then, may all of your fiber arts projects and your favorite hockey teams stay out of the penalty box. Bye-bye. <laughs>